Here's they're ready. We'll be able to let you start to eat. My name is Matt Cork. I'm a pastor here at Oak Life Baptist Church. We want to welcome all of you here to the 25th annual Holiday and Supper. We're excited about this year and just thankful the Lord has blessed us to be able to see this happen 25 times. For me this year, this is my 10th one as pastor here at Oak Life Baptist Church. I'm just so, so very thankful. Something we're going to do a little uh, different at the beginning. We have uh, a man in the Philippines. He's a Filipino, uh, Brother Freddie DeVega. And uh, we, we monthly support work over the Philippines. Over, I think over 250 pastors in the Philippines that we support over there, along with the orphanage and the school and different things. And so, Brother David DeVega is having a, a birthday with them. Uh, about an hour from now, he's going to have a birthday. We're going to do something and we're going to say something. We're going to video this so that we can send it to the Philippines. And I'll let Brother Ken uh, uh, What it is is I end up on work out here at Old Byron and we do the Philippines all week leaving again in May for two weeks. And so Filipino people, are, uh, they really like the sight. So here's what. They sent me email like at 4 o'clock because, of course, they're 13 hours ahead of us, so it's already Sunday morning over there. And they wanted me to see the video of the Brother Freddy wishing them happy birthday and also a video of the church. Well, they just like we can have first football. So once I say happy birthday, I will, we're going to turn the camera around, and so y'all will be on Facebook all over the Philippines. So y'all really give a sure enough happy, happy birthday for the Freddy's Y'all remember that? Okay, you ready? Good morning, Brother Freddie. I want to wish you a happy birthday on behalf of myself, my family, and Oak Meyer Baptist Church. Uh, just a great serving week. You can't wait to see you again in a few months. And of course, we're 13 hours behind you, so we're not having churches, but we're having a wild game supper. So men from all over the state of Arkansas has come to wish you a happy birthday. So on behalf of myself, and I'm and my children, I wish you a happy birthday. And all the men from Arkansas also want to wish you a happy birthday. Happy Hey, you make sure I get your name, okay? 
Okay, okay. Right. Yeah, right there. Okay. Did I have a question? One over here. Raise your hand again so we can be sure. Over there. Have questions. All right, thank you. I want to ask right now, how many of you are 25 years of age and younger? 25 years of age? Raise your hand high. When this ball game sucker was started, you had not even been born yet. <laughs> well, that's good. Amen. Well, all right, listen, one way we're going to get started this evening, we're going to uh, song director of the Lord, Kelly. He's going to come up along with some men, and they're going to uh, lead you to some con a congregational song. You'll see on the table there are some uh, uh, little leaflets there that's got some songs in it. We're going to let you know what we're going to sing. And, uh, Okay, brother Lord. This week we don't have a but you've heard it all the time. Go how let it keep us. So you want to have both the stands for the
God, we're praying for the salvation of your soul, Father. Heavenly Father, now, Lord, I just again just thank you, Lord, for this privilege. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, who's first? Row number
believe the, the Lord, uh, He keeps up with all that, so I'm going to trust His account better than mine. Amen? And uh, I just thank the Lord for the privilege to be here again. I do want to ask you to pray for one specific thing, and you probably have already picked up on it, that I'm having a lot of problems with my hearing. And uh, a lot of times, it's not so much that I don't hear, but I don't understand. I, it doesn't make sense. To, so if I give you a real stupid answer, uh, then you just say, that's his heart, he's getting old, and he, and he can't hear. And uh, sometimes uh, I smile real big and nod my head, and I should be frowning and about to cry, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, I knew I had to have some hearing aids back uh, several years ago, about almost 10 now, when I got uh, hearing aids, and I'm in the process of getting some new ones. I was doing a little short intro for a church in Mississippi there, about 10 miles from the house. And so I gave the invitation, and there was a lady that came forward, and uh, uh, it was the form, the pastor that had passed away. It was his daughter, his oldest daughter. And uh, we got down at the altar and everything, and I heard her say, Brother Harvey, I want you to pray for me. And uh, then we prayed, and uh, she said, uh, I want to join the church uh, this morning. And so uh, I didn't hear her say that, so I just got up from the altar and went behind the pulpit, and I said, it's been a blessing for us to be in the house of God this morning. I want to ask so-and-so to dismiss us. And she was standing there beside of me. <laughs> and uh, she told me before church that night, she said, Brother Harvey, I know you didn't hear me. And she said, but I came forward to join the church. And so I just made a laugh out of it. I said, well, Kim, I didn't know that. I said, I thought you told me you had robbed the bank at Avery and you wanted to get forgiveness for it. <laughs> and we had a good time and she joined the church that night. Uh, but uh, anyway, if you have a copy of God's Word and you would like to, turn to the book of Hosea, chapter number 3. Hosea, chapter number 3. And it only has five verses. And we're going to read those five verses. And then I want to preach on the subject of the unfailing love of God. The unfailing love of God. In verse 1, the Bible says, Then said the uh, Lord unto me, Go get love a woman beloved of her friend, yet uh, uh, an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. So I brought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man, so will I also be for thee. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without a cherubim. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God, and David their king, 
and shall fear the Lord and His goodness in the latter days. Father, thank You for the precious Word of God. Thank You, dear Lord, for the people that are here tonight. And Lord, if there's any that has not been saved, I trust that today would be the day of their salvation. I pray if there's any of your children who are not where they ought to be, that they would uh, just simply make things right with you in their heart and serve you and walk in your will for their life in the days to come. Lord, help us to preach now. We'll praise you and thank you for everything you do. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. I don't know uh, how much you may or may not know about the book of Hosea, but uh, God uses Hosea's tragedy in his own marriage life to illustrate to you and I his love for his people, Israel. And so I want us to look at that tonight. And, uh, and see the unfailing love of God. Now I want to tell you, I used to think if somebody said there's going to preach on love, I thought, well, there's some little mansy pansy something that uh, ain't going to tickle everybody's ears and, uh, and we'll go home. But I want to tell you, the more I study about the love of God, and, uh, and all that's involved in His love and the kind of love that He has for the world and for His children. It is amazing to me and it's a blessing to be able to study uh, about the love of God. Now when we look at this, there are some things I want to bring out uh, in comparison to Hosea's situation what God tells him and compare that to the love of God that he has for us. When we look at these scriptures, the first thing that I want us to notice is that God's love is a pursuing love. It's a pursuing love. Now the Bible says, Then said the Lord unto me, Go get love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adultery. Now, here God told Hosea, said, you go to where Gomer is. She's on the slave block of sin. She's going to be sold as a slave, and you find her back and bring her back, and you love her. Now, I say, is that not what God does? He is, his love is a pursuing love. Now, I won't tell you, I didn't come to God until God first had come to me. Amen? I mean, God initiated that. I, I wasn't looking for God the Sunday that I was saved. I didn't go to church that morning with my mind made up. I'm going to get saved today. But while I was sitting there on the pew of that church, just like you're sitting here, God just touched my heart and I began to see that I was lost and I was undone and God pursued me and came to where I was when I could not get to where He was and wrapped His arms around me, put the handcuffs of love on me and drew me to the Lord Jesus Christ and I was saved by His marvelous and amazing grace. Amen. I will tell you, God's love is a pursuing love. Now, uh, God doesn't love us, love us just after we repent, but God loves us before we repent. Amen? God loves us and uh, He cares for us. Even before we repent, God loves us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son 
uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm glad that God came by my house one day. Amen. I'm glad that God, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the preaching of the Word of God, knocked at my heart's door and God drew me to himself and saved me by his wonderful and marvelous grace. He is, his love is a pursuing love. He told her, he said, now Gomer, yeah, he, she's not coming to you. You're going to have to go to her. Amen? And so that's what Hosea did. He went and bought Gomer off the slave market of sin. Now, I want to tell you, all of us were slaves to sin. Amen? You see, you don't sin. Uh, you don't sin in order to become a sinner. You sin because you are a sinner. Amen? And God knew that. And God, before you ever even thought about coming to Him, He had you on His mind. I like that song. When Christ was on the cross, I was on His mind. Amen? That's true. You may not know it. You may have not ever realized it. But I want you to know if you're here tonight, God Almighty loves you. Amen? He loves you just like you are. Amen? I tell you, you don't have to, some people say, well, I'm going to get, I'm going to join the church and I'm going to start the church and this, that, and other. Uh, but i got to get my life straightened out uh, before I do. Friends, you'll die and go to hell because you will never get your life straightened out without the mercy and the grace of the pursuing love of God. Well, I think about, uh, I think about this uh, in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8. It says, but God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that amazing? That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I'm telling you, I, I can't say, but I'm so glad that Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loved me. Jesus loved even me. Amen. Isn't that amazing? I, <coughs> an old redneck uh, Mississippi Hill boy uh, grew up in a sharecropper's home, didn't have anything. I mean, we never, uh, my dad never owned an acre of land, never owned a house, never owned a car of his own, uh, and yet God uh, loved me and came to where I was uh, and saved me by His marvelous and wonderful grace. Uh, and now I'm on the way to heaven. Somebody said, Brother Harvey, where are you headed to? I said, well, I said, I'm, I'm on the, going to heaven. I just stopped off here to enjoy a meal with you fellows and to preach to you a little bit. Amen. I'm glad uh, that God love is a pursuing love. There may be somebody here that already God has nudged your heart and God is pursuing you with His pursuing love. I think about uh, how that God's love is a, it, it is a pursuing love. God is seeking and God is a searching God. Amen? He's a seeking God. Now think about this. For example, old Philip, uh, when uh, when he was uh, there in the middle in Acts, uh, he was in the middle of a revival, and God took him out of that revival and put him over there with that uh, where that eunuch uh, was coming back from Jerusalem, and for one man, now God to put, went to where he was uh, and and sent Philip there to tell him and preach to him the gospel 
and he had been to Jerusalem to worship and you can't worship until you get saved. Amen. Amen. And, and uh, boy, he, he was pursued by the loving mercy of a loving God. I think also uh, about that one lost sheep in the, in the book of Luke. Uh, chapter 15, uh, uh, that one sheep that was lost, uh, the Bible said that he left uh, that 99 and went uh, and sought uh, and looked for him until he found him, that one little sheep, uh, and he put him on his shoulders and carried him back to the fold. Amen. Now, you know that's amazing. I read in the book of Isaiah where the Bible said that the government shall be on his shoulder, singular. But when he went to get that little lost sheep, that little lost lamb, said he put him on his shoulders, on both of his shoulders. Isn't that amazing how secure a person is once they're saved by the grace of God? I know I've said this before, but I tell you, I'm so saved that if I were to swing out over a hell on a rotten corn stalk, I wouldn't fall in. Amen? Because I'm saved, I'm under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Isn't that a wonderful thing to think about John? In John chapter 4, and verse number 4, Jesus said, and he must uh, needs go through Samaria. Why? Why did he needs go through Samaria? Because there was a Samaritan woman that he was going to find at the well, and she was going to be saved. Amen. He was seeking, uh, and he was pursuing uh, that woman. Uh, God is seeking, uh, and God uh, is searching uh, for those who are lost uh, and who will come to him uh, by his mercy and by his grace. Amen. So I'm very thankful that God's love is a pursuing love. Let me say secondly, God's love not only is a pursuing love, but God's love is a purchasing love. Amen. Look at what it said in verse 2. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. Uh, he purchased her off of the slave market of sin. Amen. I'm telling you, God's love is not only pursuing, but it is a it is a purchasing love. He paid the price for you and I. Amen. Aren't you glad that he was willing to die? The Son of God, the 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 the, uh, the second person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And He came uh, into this world, robed Himself uh, with a garment of flesh, lived here for 33 and a half years. He was spit upon, He was mocked, He was laughed at, and finally went to a cross and they nailed Him to the cross and He died on on that cross and shed his precious blood. Do you know why he done that? He was purchasing uh, the sinner. Amen. He was purchasing uh, those that would come to him by the grace and mercy of God. 30 pieces of silver is the price of a slave. And that's exactly what Jesus done for us. Matthew chapter 20, verse 28 says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. Isn't that amazing? Do you realize that God loved you if you're saved enough to His only begotten Son to die and shed His blood that you might be saved? You know, we ought to just take out about 10 minutes and shout a while. Amen. 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 
that God would love us and God would pay the price for our sins and, 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 and let His own Son die on an old, cruel, rugged cross. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 20 says, For ye are bought with a price. Amen. We've been bought with a price. Somebody said, well, uh, I didn't get saved that way. I saved myself. No, you didn't. You may think you did, but you don't save yourself. It's not within you to save yourself. Now, you may turn over a new leaf. You may quit drinking. You may quit cursing. You may quit lying, but you're still just as lost and undone, and you're headed to hell just as sure as your name is what it is. You must be bought with a price, and that price is the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think about a story that I read about, uh, I don't know how many years ago it's been, it's been a pretty good while ago, for this little boy, he made him a little ship and he carried it down to the stream and he put it in that stream and he had a string and the string slipped out of his hand and that little boat, that little ship got away from him. And so several months later, he was walking down the street, looked in a, a, a window of a, of a shop and there was his little boat. And uh, he, he knew it was his. And so he went in and he talked to that man and he told him what he wanted and he asked him if he would keep it so he could go get the money and he went back and he bought that ship. And so when he went out the door, the, the shop owner heard him say, pull that little boat up close to his heart. And he said, you're twice mine. He said, I created you and I made you and now I bought you so you're twice mine. <laughs> and that's exactly what God done for us. Amen. He made us. He created us. We fell into sin and then God sent Jesus to pay the cost and He bought us back. And so we're twice His. Amen. What a blessing that is. I praise His holy and wonderful name that I have been bought uh, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then let me say thirdly that God's love not only is a pursuing love and not only a purchasing love, but God's love is a pledging love. Amen. Look at what it says in verse 3. He says, And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the heart, and thou shalt not be for another man, so will I be for thee. <laughs> God's love is a pledge of love. Amen. Oh, he took over off of that spot, and he said, from now on, you're going to be for me and not for another, and I am going to be for thee. Amen. I want you to know tonight, God has pledged Himself to us. His love is a pledging love. We're to be for Him, and He is for us. Amen. I'm glad of that. I don't have to face one moment of any day without Almighty God. Amen. And His love uh, uh, for me. I know no matter what situation I may encounter, His love has been pledged to me and I know that He loves me and cares for me. Amen. I will tell you, that'll make a difference in your life. That'll put a shout in you. That'll put a a skip in your walk and a praise on your lips when you begin to think about that God, the creator of everything, has pledged Himself to be yours. Amen? Oh my, what a, what a blessing that is. Uh, you see, uh, oh, Hosea said, uh, let us remember uh, uh, the marriage vows again. Uh, God says, if you 
will pledge yourself to me, then I will pledge myself to you. If you will receive Him into your heart as your Savior, as the Holy Spirit draws you, pulls and tugs at your heart, God says, I will pledge myself to you. Amen. Boy, that old song when you speaks to your heart about doing that. And you will. You'll never regret it. You'll always be thankful that you obeyed the Lord. Brother Matt, I'm going to ask for every head by as I close. Let's read it again. You heard a powerful message here. You see, God has spoke to your heart tonight, perhaps. You know what you need to do. So, what we're going to ask you right now. We're just asking you to take that step to receive. We're asking you just to come down and, and just come and say, Brother Matt, I'm going to be saved. God has spoken this evening. And I want to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That the God that He spoke about that was that pursued Him is pursuing me right now. He's spoken to my heart. Why not this evening give your heart and life to Jesus? <clears throat> Say, Brother Matt, how do I do that? Well, the Bible says if you'll confess in your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, He says, Thou shalt be saved. My friend, why would you want to go out through eternity not knowing Christ as your Lord and Savior? If God loved you so much that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. With their heads bowed or eyes closed, I'm going to ask you, if there's someone here that says, you know, Brother Matt, well, I'm wrestling with this. I know that I'm lost. I need Jesus. Would you just slip your hand up? I'm not going to come to you and call your name. Would you just slip your hand up and say, Brother Matt, I'm lost. Thank you. Somebody else, just slip your hand up. Anybody else? Someone has lifted their hand. How about you? Say, Brother Matt, I'm lost. Boy, if something happened to me, I'd spend eternity separated from God forever. Anybody else? church has been praying for you. Been praying for souls that are lost and been praying that tonight that you'll give your life to Jesus. Why not tonight? Why not tonight? Why not have that assurance that no matter what circumstance you find yourself in in life, that God is always there with you. No matter what the circumstances. Maybe you're here tonight you're saved. But you've been wavered. You've been out of fellowship with God. Maybe tonight you need to come to this altar. We've got an altar right here in front of this cabin here. You might want to come and just pour your heart out to the Lord. Maybe you're here tonight with a burden and, and life has been difficult and been going through a lot and, and you need somebody to pray with you. Why not you come tonight and let someone pray? we got men right up here right now that are ready to receive you. How about this evening? How about it? That one that raised her hand and said they're lost. Maybe you need to just come forward right now. Just come forward and say, Brother Matt, I'm lost. I want to receive Christ as my Lord and Savior. Why not do that right now? Maybe you got a friend with you come with. Maybe you're a young person and you come with somebody and they, they can come with you right now. How about it? How about it?
God loves you, my friend. God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Say, brother, that why did He have to die? Because He's the only sacrifice that can pay for our sin debt. Only one. Why is He the only one? Because He's the Son of God. He lived a perfect, sinless life. Yet He went to the cross of Calvary. There He was suspended between heaven and earth. He gave His life for you. How about it right now? Oh, listen, God's wanting to save some people tonight. God's wanting to take some wayward Christians and get them back in the right direction tonight. How about you? How about you? Hey, you just step out of that chair. They'll, they'll make a way. These rolls are rolling right down the middle, and you just come right on.
course, he's good all the time. Amen. He's good all the time. Amen.
we don't want you to come and see us. Don't leave without seeing us, okay? If you don't have a Bible, we got some. Do we still have some Bibles over there? They give out already, okay. But uh, there's some information on the table about Old Fire Baptist Church. If you want to ask us anything about the church, feel free to do so. Let's stand together. If you would, please. Hey, listen. If anybody that wants a plate of food, feel free to get it, okay? As you can see, we got lots of food. So if you would like to get a plate to go, don't hesitate to do so, okay? And don't hurt one another trying to get it, okay? Let's have a word of prayer. I'm going to ask at this time, well, we're fortunate tonight to have Brother J.R. McDonald. He pastors the church in Ufala, Oklahoma. Also has a Calvary Baptist ministry where they minister to men that's having a difficult time and and uh, they just got a wonderful ministry there with summer camps. And so I'm going to ask Brother J.R., will you close us in a word of prayer, please?